Um, this is a 48 volt club car. One of the easiest ways to identify it is the charge receptacle is round as opposed to the V shape. And another easy way to identify it is the posts on any given battery are on the same side of the battery rather than opposed. That means these are 8 volt batteries rather than 6 volt batteries. Um, one of the first things you'll notice is if you attempt to test the, uh, the, the charging receptacle on a 48 volt club car, there is no negative current at the charge receptacle. It's governed by the computer, which is under here, which is different than the controller. So the computer does not allow negative current to be present at the charge receptacle. So if when you're attempting to uh, charge the car, if for some reason it, it will not charge the problem, if it's not a mechanical problem right here, just a broken wire or something, it's probably in the computer. So keep that in mind. Okay, one of the, one of the first things we want to check is let's go ahead and put our, uh, our uh, test light. We'll put the clip on the battery last negative, and you can see that's this wire here that travels back into the forward reverse mechanism, or I'm sorry, back into the controller mechanism, and probe the battery last positive over there just to make sure we have 48 volts. Okay, now checking the low amp switching circuit, the way that thing works is we, we steal power from the batteries on the negative, I'm sorry, on the positive side of the circuit off of the controller. That current goes through the key switch first, then through the micro switch, which is down here on the V-Glide or on these later model cars, which is called a uh, multi-step potentiometer. That current uh, goes through the micro switch on that multi-step potentiometer. That micro switch is activated when you depress the accelerator. It then comes up and goes through this first micro switch here. From that micro switch, it travels back to the solenoid to activate the system. So there's actually, it's, it's very easy to test this system without pulling anything apart primarily. And the way you do that, again, is go ahead and put your, uh, your, your clip of your probe light on the battery last negative. And then if you probe the bottom contact on this first micro switch, and you need to activate this micro switch, so you put the car into forward or reverse, make sure your key switch is on, step on the accelerator, you should get a light here. Okay, that tells us a handful of things. That tells us we're getting current into the micro switch on the multi-step potentiometer, out of that into the key switch, out of the key switch, and into this micro switch. Now, to make sure this micro switch is working, now this will also give us light even if it's not in forward, forward or reverse, if it's in neutral, it gives light as well. To make sure this micro switch is working, put it in forward or reverse, probe the other side of that micro switch and then activate our pedal again and we'll get a light there. Now that tells us that side is working. Now we can go back to the solenoid and do that same test right on the two small terminals of the solenoid just like we did on the other cars. That's exactly the same kind of test. The solenoid is hidden under here. Okay. Okay, now on this, this is a computer controlled 48 volt club car again, and you can see this is the, this is the controller. However, this one has, this is a solid state controller. Uh, the 48 volt club car has a computer here that controls the input from the charger to the batteries and also the, the drain that the motor is allowed to put on the batteries. So this controls everything. Um, and then over here is your solenoid. And the way the solenoid works, the way the controller works is exactly like we've been over on other cars, and I'll show you that quickly. Um, we have the, the clip end of our, uh, our, our test light here connected to the uh, battery last positive. So of course this terminal here is our battery last negative, and you can see the 48 volt light there. Now that's, that's the battery last negative connected to the solid state controller. If we go to the uh, negative out post on the controller, you'll see there's no light. Now if we activate the system, the light will start out dull and then grow more and more brighter, or I should say brighter and brighter as we depress the accelerator, okay? That controller is operating correctly. 
Now, a lot of times when these cars come in and they're having problems, what the problem is is the computer. If we've checked the, the low amp switching circuit and all of the high amp cables, and we know that we have continuity through the whole system, everything seems to be working correctly, but for some reason the car won't run, most of the time what the problem is is the computer. Now, to simulate that, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the computer here, and I'm going to show you how to bypass the computer. This is the way to test to see if you have a bad onboard computer. Now the computer uh, disconnected, we put it in gear, turn on the key, we step on the accelerator, you'll hear a little bit of a whine, but then the car won't run. Hear that? Okay. Now the way to bypass this computer is we take a uh, jumper cable and we go, we go on the solenoid, on the small terminals, the low amp terminals. We find the terminal with the yellow wire leave all the wires intact. We hook one end of our jumper cable to that terminal that has the yellow wire on it, and we connect the other end of the jumper cable to the battery last negative. Now we can go up here in the battery pack, or we can do it right here, right on the controller. That's what this stud is here for. We connect that too. Now, we put the car in forward or reverse, turn the key switch on, step on the accelerator. The, the car should run even with the computer disconnected. Let's see if it does. There you go. So now what we've done there is bypass the computer. That's the easiest test for a 48-volt system. Okay, now we're going to talk about how to test to see if the, if the controller is bad. Now, this controller is made by Curtis. It's fairly standard for any of the golf cars that are solid state controller. So now one of the first things you're going to check of these three spade terminals here, again this is a low amp circuit, of these three spade terminals here, the red wire is what feeds positive current into the controller. So the first thing you want to, uh, the first thing you want to test is go ahead and uh, clip your, your probe light, clip the, put the clip on the battery last negative Probe this spade terminal right here. Make sure you don't touch the case. Activate the system with the foot feed, and you should see a light here. Okay, now that's telling us that we got current into the low amp side of the controller. Okay, now another piece that's very important is these other two wires. That's on terminal number one, by the way. Terminals number two and three are the potentiometer the ohms, the variable ohms input into the system. And we need to test that with an ohms meter. Okay, now this, this holds for pretty much any solid state controlled car. Terminals number two and three are the potentiometer. Now what the potentiometer is, is a variable ohms device that's attached to the foot feed. So as you depress the foot feed, it varies the ohms. Now, it can run one of two directions. It can either vary from zero at rest to 5,000 ohms at full acceleration or 5,000 at rest to zero ohms at full acceleration. The way to tell the difference is typically a car that has an aluminum colored, uh, a bright silver aluminum colored controller ranges from 5,000 to zero, and one that has a black anodized controller ranges from zero to 5,000. So now the way we test this is we, we put our, our ohms meter, we, uh, we attach those two probes to these two spade connectors that are off of terminals two and three. Now as we depress our foot feed to activate that potentiometer, you will notice that we have showing about 5,000 ohms. Now as we depress the foot feed, that should gradually scale down towards zero. We're down at 3,000, down at 2,000. We go on down to 1,000 and on down. We should get down to a, at, at minimum about 500. Well, this one's ranging all the way down to zero. What that told us by ranging all the way through, now if we range the other way, as we release the foot feed gradually, we range there up to 1900, up to 2900, we come on up, we'll get 3800, and on up over 4000. Okay, what that tells us is that the potentiometer is working correctly. 
Um, the, the, this is a G1, G2 style Yamaha, and we're going to look at the low amp switching circuit on this. And uh, this is a completely different circuit because it fetches its power. The low amp switching circuit fetches its power off of the charge receptacle here that fetches its power from the solenoids and also from the motor connection. So the first thing we're going to do again, let's, uh, let's put our test light clip on the battery last positive and then we probe the battery last negative to make sure that we have full 36 volt current. What we'll do to start our low amp testing is we'll go ahead and probe the uh, charge receptacle and if we go into, I can't reach it, if we go into the negative terminal here, we'll see that we have good feed into the negative side. Now let's follow this uh, low amp switching wire and we'll probe into that wire. We can go into the connection here and we have good current there. Now right here on the negative wire is a fuse holder. So we'll check on the other side of that fuse holder and we have current there. That tells us that that fuse is good. Okay. Now this negative side feeds back here into the switching system. We'll go over that in just a minute. Now we're going to test the positive side of this. Now this is the, the, the different part of this car. As we probe the receptacle, you'll find that we have current there. Now as we probe um, on the, the, uh, the front side of the fuse, you have current there. Now we'll probe through the fuse and make sure we have current there too. We do. Now here is the interesting part of this system. Inside of the charge receptacle is this little white button. That button gets depressed when the charge uh, plug is inserted here. So now if we depress that button, it turns off our positive feed to the low amp switching circuit. What that does is it helps eliminate the possibility of someone hopping into this car while it's plugged into the, the <coughs> charger and driving away and yanking the charger off the wall. The downside of this is if you have any trouble with this switching system here or these fuses here, the car will not run. So that's one of the first things you want to check is make sure that you have feed through the po positive side and feed through the negative side. If you have both of those, that's the main circuit there. Now, the way this system switches from forward to reverse, the, okay, the way this system again switches from forward to reverse is uh, through a key switch that operates two solenoids. Now, of this three spade terminal here, um, one feed in is positive, and that feeds both solenoids, and then these two here feed in negative, and that's switched. Um, one side is for forward, one side is for reverse. So I'll show you how to test that. Put your clip on the positive and then probe this spade terminal here and you should get a light. So that's our negative feed into both solenoids. Put your clip on battery last negative and we probe one side of this and it doesn't matter which side, just pick one side and then turn the key to either forward or reverse and step on the accelerator and we should get a light. Okay, the key switch is in reverse. We've probed the spade that's, that's to the right. We step on the accelerator, we get a light. What that's telling us is that the switching circuit through the key switch, from the batteries through the key switch to this connector is giving us correct current. Now, we flip the key switch into forward, probe the other spade terminal, step on the accelerator and we should get a light as well. Okay, that's telling us we're getting good feed there. Now these same terminals are down on the solenoids and we can test those as well. They're just a lot harder to get to so it's easier to test it right here at this plug. Now as we plug that back in, if we have the key switch in forward and we step on the accelerator and we hear a click, one of the solenoids should close and that would be the forward solenoid and then the car runs. Now if we reverse the key switch to the reverse position, step on the accelerator, the other solenoid should close and the car should run as well. One very important thing to note, and this applies especially to a car that has a key switch and solenoid system for forward and reverse, but it also applies to any car. You should never change 
the forward reverse mechanism from one direction to the other and engage the system while you're rolling in a direction. What I